Welcome to the Argon News Network, where we bring you yesterday's news tomorrow. Welcome, Argonites, Agonists, and Argonians, uh, to a news roundup on Argon Light, the black belt of 8 bits, where many things have been happening in the last week. Um, the creator himself, Bernardo, posted uh, yesterday that the last of the original run, production run of. Um, of Argon Lights uh, are available at PCB Way, and once they sell out, that will be it. If you want to claim that you own one of the original series, you can still go buy them, uh, like he says, if you want one to collect the original. Now, as someone who has boxes and boxes of 8 bit stuff in their shed for over 30 years, do not invest in this um, for financial reasons. For nostalgia, absolutely. They will also probably lose their values uh, less quickly than NFTs. Um, however, yeah, uh, as an investment, retro hardware, to, to my experience, hasn't really worked. If you have other experience, leave your um, impressions down in the comments below. And there it is at PC Way Way for $104. I paid 50 euros for mine at Olimex, so yeah, you know, you're paying the price for the original, which uh, which is there and just looks slightly different. Well, it's green apart from instead of red, which is the Olimex. Speaking of Olimex, um, Svetan, hope I'm pronouncing that uh, right, from Olimex, uh, my favorite Bulgarians, uh, has been thinking about building a 6502 based um, single board computer, retro or modern 8-bit, similar to the Argon. Um, um, he went on to some various groups. Discussions seem active, so I think this project might happen. Interesting things here, he's chasing a pri price point around 25, 30 bucks now. That is really cheap, and yeah, I, I wish them all the best. I will definitely go get one uh, once it lands, um, and even if it's just to uh, literally side by side experience the difference between the Z80 and the 6502 um, uh, um, processor instruction set, they they are very different. You could say 6502 was uh, the the grandfather of RISC, much simpler, much shorter instruction set than the Z80 one. Um, so yeah, let's see where that goes. With those two, you'll have pretty much everything covered. The Z80 covered the legends like uh, like the Spectrum and the ZX81 and, and even the Game Boy 6502 is more like the Commodore 64 uh, Apple II crowd. So yeah, uh, the principle would, uh, from my understanding, to be keep the right-hand side uh, like our Argon with the ESP32, the modern system on a chip, as the graphics and I.O., which means we can uh, reuse the, the firmware by Dean, still with a serial communication, and this left side would then be 6502 based with some neat little features like more um, uh, you know, HDMI so we don't get into all of these HDA, um, uh, VGA mode problems. The assumption would be that the modes would then be compatible with HDMI. So exciting stuff happening between this and there's also an Argon Heavy, an Argon 1.1, there's the Cerberus, there's the Argon 65. Um, yeah, this stuff is starting to look like Pokemon in terms of, hey, you got to catch them all, but exciting stuff. Speaking of Olimex, my, um, oh no, sorry, uh, speaking of graphics card, um, another person on Facebook, uh, a big player, Igor, um, has forked FabGL, and by forking that, has actually already found an error in the original FabGL, uh, and has been able to add in his version some additional colors, palleted colors, which were not av available in Dean's um, official VDP. So, yep, the parallel evolution, parallel developments going on, and um, yeah, you know, you can download a better graphics card. Try doing that with your RTX 3060 or something like that. Yeah. So, welcome to Argon. It's the it's the place to be. Um, speaking of downloading, uh, another person, uh, Avalon Bits. Uh, sorry, not uh, wrong, uh, wrong thing. Uh, so, by the way, yeah, if you want to have um, Igor's download, it's under Avalon Bits on GitHub. GitHub. I will progressively be putting all these links in the description below. And last but not least, speaking of downloading, a, a user called Turbo Vega. Apparently, he's actually called Curtis Whitley, but Turbo Vega has uh, made a set of uh, utilities which allows you to access the full RAM, which is available with the EZ80, from within the BBC Basic, right? So you get the standard 64K uh, K, and you access another 384 plus 64, bringing you to 512. You can download more memory onto this device. 
You try doing that with your iPhone. And um, yeah, I got it running over here. Hang on. Yep, I downloaded it uh, to my own issue. Let's uh, run that. It's not very exciting. This is just stepping through a number of tests where um, the solution is writing bits or strings or arrays, or uh, you can see some floats there, writing them to this additional memory and reading them back. When I tested it yesterday, my argon would uh, actually hard reset or uh, soft reset rather after test number 15 now it goes all the way through so all the features which are claimed in the documentation and there's a lot of them right you can write arrays you can write 16 uh, 8 16 24 32 bit strings etc etc initialize it and um, they seem to be all working i look forward to playing with that half a megabyte on a z80 that would have made uh, history a bit um, a bit different let me uh, go back to over there. So uh, let's see what you have. Yeah, here are the um, here are the, the, the things I, again available on GitHub. And just before we leave, wanted to dive in very briefly into the actual code. Um, so it's calling, you know, it's setting these variables, and then it's causally calling with user. It's calling these functions which correspond to what we just saw. So you know, there's a, a function em set the source address. Well, that's um, that's what he's doing over here, and then there's a user function go and write an 8-bit go and write a 16-bit go and write a 32 and the way this is done if you look at the repository there's a, a zds project uh, in assembler which does all the assembler routine to access this additional memory and make it available for basic and i guess he compiles that down to the actual uh, binary it's not even assembler it's machine code right then he places the machine code in this data data uh, array, so um, there's a little utility which converts the machine code from individual bytes into these basic data st um, statements. And then, I love this, it's like for address equals something to something, read assembly, so he's just reading byte by byte and writing that to memory. So that's how you, you program the assembler outside, um, but to run this, all you need to do is download the basic and run it. You don't need to install any libraries and whatever, which I I thought was a cool little little trick so yep that was our news roundup uh let me know in the comments if you like this kind of thing if you have content which you'd like me to cover hit me up on discord um or on the github all the links are available on the loser bum homepage. you've been a lovely audience uh, this has been fun might do one of those again um remember to like share and subscribe remember to tell your friends to like share and subscribe you're the argon community i'm loser bum you're all a bunch of bloody legends and I am out of here.